Hey there everyone, this is Bill here at Sunday Morning Rides YouTube channel and uh, just wanted to quickly go over um, another method to check your crankcase pressure sensors or ambient uh, air pressure sensors. Um, in case you don't know, right here underneath the, uh, if you're sitting on the bike, underneath the right corner of your uh, engine oil tank there is uh, the alter the ambient air pressure sensor the other one is down under there uh, underneath the gas tank opposite side um, so if you want to check the data that is going to the ECU the computer of your bike I'm just gonna stick a pin right here on the blue wire Right, you gotta jam it in there um, neatly because there is a seal um, that is supposed to keep water out. And then you're gonna go on the opposite side, the yellow wire there. And you need to get them in there, make good contacts. Um, and you should get a stock reading. Plug in a sensor here quick. I didn't mean stock reading, I meant like a reading at rest. Um, it should be in that ballpark. Um, now don't quote me on these numbers because I think I have a couple of bad sensors here. And what I've been doing is going through all of these and measuring their readings using this, um, this little pressure gauge here. And basically you just hook it up onto your fitting there. Okay, and you see we've got 2.674 there. That's at rest. That's no pressure. That's literally the reading that the ECU would be receiving from the sensor right now because the ambient air pressure sensor, it's not plugged into any hoses like the crankcase pressure sensor. Um, it's just, just the air. It's the air pressure. So right now, that sensor is reading 2.674, and this is the same exact way that the crankcase pressure sensor works. It's just reading the pressure from the actual crankcase instead of the air pressure. So, uh, watch what happens when I plug this uh, little air pressure thing on. Okay, you can see I've got that plugged onto there, and this is a cheap Amazon jobber. I probably should have spent money on a better one, but I didn't. So, we've got our clips here, right? Got them going to the uh, voltmeter here. Okay, I have it set to uh, millivolts is too low, I think. So just uh, your setup there. And again, we're at zero reading, no pressure yet. And we're still at 2.675. Now watch when I pump this up to say five, five volts. This is how I've been doing the test. And there you go. See, now it's jumped up to 2.938. Let's bump it up to 10. Yeah, it's a little bit over 10, but you get the concept. 3.207 volts. 3.206. And we'll bump it up again. 15. Yeah, over 15, but whatever. 3.465. And then again, 20 and 3.699. And that's the highest I've been going with my testing. Um, uh, what is this? This is measuring milligrams in vacuum. I'm not sure what the actual measurement is, but you get the idea. Um, you know, that's a good way uh, some other ways to test these sensors are um, you can put them under water and apply pressure um, using something like this. And if there's a leak, you'll see air coming out. Um, and that, that's a good way to test if there's an actual leak. But um, this is a good way to check the actual data um, that the sensor is sending back to the bike. 
um, the bike's ECU. Um, you know, I basically have been taking these readings and jotting them down here for all these different sensors I have and doing zero pounds, 2.674 volts, five pounds, 2.946. And what I'm gonna do is when I get a brand new sensor, I am going to uh, jot them down here. Um, if you're wondering why I have so many of these, it's because I've been trying to uh, work on some issues and I've created issues myself by just being an idiot. Like uh, I think there was one or two occasions where I started up my bike and I had the fucking uh, plug still in it. And I read somewhere out there on the internet that that could damage these. Um, I find it hard to believe. Now, there was two of these sensors here that I actually marked leaks because the pressure gauge was decreasing with these hooked up to them. And that shouldn't happen. They need to be perfectly sealed. Um, so these could potentially be defective, um, but these ones here, these top three ones, um, and as you can see, all the data is pretty darn close. But anyways, I didn't want to get into that. I just wanted to show you another way to check the sensor. So you can do it this way, where if you're just checking the seal, but if you want to actually check the the data that it's sending back to the ECU. You have your blue wire, you have your yellow wire right there. So right side blue, left side yellow, and you need a pressure gauge like this to pump it up. You need to have your voltmeter set up and you'll be able to see what data it's actually sending to the ECU. and that is uh, a good way to test. So I'm gonna do another video with a brand new sensor just to make sure that they line up. Um, and what the hell, there was one more thing I was gonna say. Um, I think that's it. 